Yeah, it's a real busy show. This is just a, a, a skip. There's just so many people along with all of the, the, the Farley girls. So trying to keep it straight, who's who, their stage name, their, their, their uh, real name. because of the changes, we're going to run everybody in costumes. Is this, this is right. Everybody here is wearing eight or nine costumes. With the cast of 64, it's an awful lot of costumes it adds up to. And they're really quick changes, so we go from airplanes to being cowboys in about uh, 15 seconds. Okay, let's go to go the other side. Okay. Yeah, Brian. The and who are the other two angels? Um, there's me, Blair, <laughs> Chad. It's the sixth season for Nepean's Company of Musical Theatre. One week from opening night of Will Rogers Follies, a Zigfield's Follies tribute to the legendary Will Rogers. I think it's organized okay, chaos. Let's go, come on, we gotta get the planes out. Remember, this is done in black light, so you're not gonna see a thing. It's a different type of a show because we're, we're dancing on stairs. So it's like doing a, a, a step workout and you're up and down the stairs like that. So that makes it more difficult. The choreography on the stairs is, is very different from doing choreography on a flat surface. Before we take off, let's go flying. There's an LX6. That's when uh, the back plate goes off. As a kid, I tried to know, I learned to make a loop. Jonathan Evans plays Will Rogers, legendary humanist, actor, newspaper columnist, and sometime philosopher whose quotes live on. The one he's most famous for is, uh, I never met a man that I didn't like. And that was, re that was really true uh, for Will Rogers, that he, uh, uh, he was a great uh, humanist and he tried to help out as many people as he could. So we both have to go over we try and train the cast. We give them each a bag and we try and train them to, to be really organized and keep all their pieces together. This year the biggest challenge was the, um, the head pieces. Um, for the uh, jeweled gowns, we had uh, I had eight jeweled uh, head pieces to do, and uh, never having done them before, I wasn't uh, too sure how I was going to construct them. But anyway, they turned they turned out fine. When you're doing your shuffle hop steps and up, make sure you get the opposite arm to the leg and really keep that balancing, okay? Howdy! It's pure entertainment, and I think audiences want that, and the kids really want it. They really want to dance. Rogers Follies runs at Centerpoint Theatre November 23rd to December 3rd. <laughs> Kathy Donovan, CJOH News. Time to the medium, time to the big, time The company of musical theatre hits the big time with the Will Rogers Follies. And CJOH TV and Magic 100 are proud to present a special benefit performance for Toy Mountain. Let's get cracking. Saturday, December 2nd at 2, bring the whole family to Centerpoint Theater for a musical extravaganza, The Will Rogers Follies. Tickets are available at the Centerpoint Theater box office.
by staying away from McDonald's. Anyways, this is the point that Mr. Zigfield wants me to introduce you to Sir? Sorry? Sorry. How much time does it? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Lord. How's my hair? Mr. told me there'd be days like this. All right. Looks like I got roped into this. It's not in me to 
run everything. Paul, why can't I do with my life what I want to? Well, I reckon you will, son, but I wouldn't be a good father if I did make it as difficult as possible for you. Stop twirling the damn rope when I'm talking to you, boy. You're my dad, I promise I'd bring you up proper. Well, I'm starting to admit defeat. Sometimes I think the only reason that you were born was to give me something curious to look at in my old age. You're staying here, that's fine. I'm sorry, Pa, I'm going to Argentina. <laughs> and also, you're staying here to run this ranch. Well, I hate to tell you this, Pa, but I can't think of any way in the world you're going to stop me. Me neither. <laughs> All right, son. You go off to the Argentine. Well, I want to tell you something. When you've ruined your life, and you're down and up without a friend in the world or a dollar to your name, I want you to remember this little piece of fatherly advice. I told you so. Now get the hell out of here while I'm still in a good mood. Yes, Mr. Zeke? Here, have we got a set back there? We can use something exotic, something uh, Zeke tell you? 
We got that Fiji Island sign, Mr. Z. Fiji Islands? Come on, Mr. Zigfield. You might as well say we met on the moon. Brilliant, Mr. Rogers. You met your wife on the moon. Here, go set up the moon immediately. Yes, sir. I understand you, Mr. Rogers. moon, but despite all of those stories about the man in the moon, I haven't met him yet. See, Miss Blake? I beg your pardon? We've had quite enough exposition, Miss Blake. Sing, please. Yes, sir, Mr. Sigfeld. Yeah, that's pretty. 
why a girl like you only comes along once in a blue earth. Why, thank you. You seem like a pretty down to moon person yourself. I'd sure like to hear you sing sometime. Why, Will Rogers, how did you know I could sing? Well, because in a Zigfield show, anyone who's dressed can sing. Uh-huh. So how about it? <laughs> you mean sing right now? No, I mean, how about my long underwears? Come in yet? Oh, well, the five o'clock ought to be arriving any minute now. <laughs> And the St. Louis World's Fair of 19... 
Well, I'm sorry to have dragged you all out of Texas Jack Wild West show featuring Will Rogers, the Cherokee Kid, but I could not bear to stand and watch a minute longer because I do not consider the show business a respectable way for a grown man to earn his living. Now, I've been waiting over three years to see Will Rogers again, and I'm not going to wait a minute longer because just as soon as I get him to give up the show business and start behaving like a normal person, that's when I'm going to marry him. What? 
folks ever notice that I always call my wife Blake whenever I'm in trouble? So I started calling her Blake all the time just in case I was in trouble and I didn't know it. Well, we need to talk. You just holler, get up and hold on. The beautiful Erlinger Theater presents the star of our show, that Oklahoma philosopher, it Will Rogers. Sorry, honey, I got a third show to do. But, but Will, we have to talk. When I was very young, I had a perfect life. My pa the perfect husband and my ma the perfect wife. And every day my life went by so perfectly. I made some perfect plans, I dreamed some perfect dreams, but now I look around, my dreams are splitting at the seams. I made one big decision, and now look at me. When I do something wrong, I do it perfectly.
need an affirmative reply, most sincerely, Florence Siegfeld. Well, bad news? Oh, your father's not sick again. No, it's nothing important. It's just another book. And listen, why don't you go collect the kids and pack the luggage and I'll go get notice. If we hurry, we can be back in the ranch by Sunday. Oh, well, you'll never regret this. I mean, not as if you're giving up a really big opportunity or anything like that. I mean, giving up five days to see the rapids is like, say, giving up the Ziegfeld Follies. I mean, you can't expect anyone in this right mind to turn down the Follies, but why talk about that? I'm sure those folks in New York would put up for my little act with the rope. Oh, but it's not a little act just anymore. No, no, no. Not since that day back in Milwaukee when you got your feet all tangled up in the Texas skin and you had laid that line. Oh, heck, folks. Looks like I got all my feet to the one. No, no, no. You're a talker now. Mr. Zinko doesn't pay $600 a week just for a few rope tricks. You give him a different show every day. so much. Oh. It's the consecutive performance here in the Follies. 
Now, a whole lot has happened in the last past six years. Uh, we lost a few important men. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt died, and Tsar Nicholas of Russia, and, well, my pa, Clem Rogers. Now, it might surprise the folks to know that the, uh, the three of them shared something in common. That's right, none of them ever got my act. Now, I got a real important announcement to make. This marks my final appearance here in the Falls. That's right, tomorrow I'm off to Hollywood, California to become a movie star. And not only that, I'll be flying out of here by aeroplane. Be careful, Bill! Oh, I won't actually be doing the flying. I'll leave flying to folks who know how, like uh, Wiley Post. You're always here, Wiley. I'm waiting for you, Will. You promised you'd fly up to Alaska with me. <laughs> no, Wiley, they don't come to the end of this show. Jeez, never saw a fella so anxious to break his neck. Mine too, come to think of it. Well, like I said, I'm off to Hollywood, California to become a movie star. Now, my only regret is that my pa never lived long enough to see me up there on the silver screen, but I tell you, he never would have approved of it. The way he used to say, an actor's ego is the only thing that keeps on growing without any nourishment. Nourishment. Now, like I said, uh, I also wanted to try my hand at a new device they got called radio. Now, that'll be an improvement. Paul, what are you doing here? I just told these folks you were dead. You died six years ago. Yeah, well, so did some of your jokes. They're still hanging around. <laughs> now, where'd you get these wings from? Wardrobe? Hell no, they're real. Do they work? Nah, I still need the damn roller skates to take off. <laughs> I was just telling these folks what a shame it was you, you, you never lived to see my success. Success? What success? Well, you know what I do. I'm the star of this here show. <laughs> Not as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Hello, ladies! Forget it, Paul. Hello, Paul. What is it you're saying again? Forget it, Paul. You're dead. I was just telling these folks I'm off to Hollywood, California to become a movie star. You? I may be dead, sonny, but I ain't lying. You sure ain't much to look at. Well, I figure that's half your fault. Instead of running me down like this, you ought to be proud. Proud? <laughs> sure, you know what I do, Pa. I make these folks laugh. Just ask them. They like what I do. What the hell do they know? They like the dog act, boy. <laughs> Listen to me, Will. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers, what the hell's going on down there? I am paying you to do a show. Sorry, listen, Paul, you're gonna have to go. I got a show we do. Listen to me, Will. I know I wanted you to be a rancher like me, but hell, if it wasn't in your boy, you could have been a doctor or an inventor. Someone that makes a difference, who changes the world. Because that's what greatness is, son. Leaving the world different than the way you found it. Well, it's great to be great, Paul, but it's even greater to be human. Uh, don't you want to be great? No man's great if he thinks he is, Paul. Who said that? Well, I just did. Well, that's not that bad.
Thanks a lot, folks. <laughs> I'll tell you, whooping like that sure takes off a lot out of a fella. Actually, I can't lie to you. That wasn't me. That was Pat Smith. Come on out here, Pat. How about that real difficult one I showed you, the crow hop? Have you been practicing the lack I showed you? Would you show me one more time, Mr. Rogers? Oh, sure, why not? Goes a little something like this. Actually, you should be able to do it by now, Pat. Let's see you do it. Okay, I'll try. But, Pat, I want you to sell it this time. I want you to sell it like an auction again. All right. I have a hundred dollar every two minutes, you can do two hundred dollars every three hundred dollars. took a smoke during the break, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. As far as I can tell, the only good thing about smoking tobacco is it chases away the mosquitoes. Which is proof positive that mosquitoes are a whole lot smarter than people. Now, a whole lot has happened uh, while you ladies were outstanding in, their, uh, in line. Uh, we had three presidents, and uh, we had that monkey trial down in Tennessee to prove that man was descended from apes. But I never really believed that, because I have yet to meet an ape that was heartless, greedy, or devious. Now, I always figured that man was descended from lawyers. <laughs> now, like I always say, folks, all I know is what I uh, read in the papers, and lately they've been using this new word, ecology, which, as far as I can tell, means our land. Now, the, the pioneers who didn't know any better went down and cut every damn tree in sight and never did replant one. They, uh, they plowed up all the land that should have been left for grass the way God intended. You see, they thought it was the land they were living off of, but what they were really living off of was future generations. Because the problem with land is, well, they just ain't making the stuff anymore. Look around, the world's a lovely sight. Lovely sky and sea, where it used to be. Look around, the world is shining bright. Watch the green grass grow well. That once was so. Where's the spring that loved the rain? Where's the growth down lover's lane? Look around. Thank you. 
would like to call trouble in paradise. Only a paradise in this case was uh, in our in Hollywood, California. I guess we've grown pretty rich by now because our little ranch had 22 rooms and uh, we had a polo field. But the trouble was, because of my work, I wasn't getting to spend as much time at home as I would have liked. So in this next song, the, the leading lady sings a torch song while she's sitting on top of a piano. Getting blue, he's left me alone again. What's new? All I do is sit and stare at a snapshot and an empty chair. What good's a man? Well, old Mr. Zinkfield says that eight of them are enough. 
By the way, there should only be seven of them now because, well, little Freddy here passed away from the diphtheria epidemic in 1921. I'm afraid you're going to have to run along there, Sonny. Mom and me alone, because she seems mighty upset about something, and there's no use pretending I don't know what it is. So, listen, why don't you run upstairs and do your homework? Homework, Pop? All right, why don't you run outside and catch us a Thanksgiving turkey? Yay! How bad is it, Blake? Pretty bad. Last time you were home, you couldn't remember where the bathroom well, it's a pretty big house, Blake. And even bigger without you in it. Will, do you realize in the last year alone, you have turned out four full-length talking pictures, 52 radio broadcasts, 365 newspaper columns, spoken at 151 banquets, and visited 19 countries on five continents. Well, I know that. Sure, you know it, but they don't. Well, why do you keep traveling so much? What are you looking for? People, Blake, I just can't get over them. No matter how different they look and talk, they're all just the same. Well, one thing I've learned is they all want exactly the same thing. Three square meals a day and a good night's rest. Well, we're people too. All we want is more of you. Does that mean you don't want all the nice presents that I brought you? What presents? Well, I got them waiting outside, but this here is just a small sample. Oh. This is the most famous amethyst in the whole world. I got it in Salon. Apparently, they took it off a statue of a goddess, but shoot, I figured it looked better on you. <coughs> oh, well, well, it's gorgeous. Now, you shouldn't have spent so much money. Life sure is crazy. I got my wife telling me not to spend what my pa told me I'd never heard. Uh, oh, it's too expensive. Take it back. To Salon? All right. Well, Rogers, you come back here. All right, I'll keep it. But I can't believe we're this rich. Have you been reading the papers? Prosperity's are right, the whole country's rich. Why, well, there's never been a time in our history when so many fools have been making so much money. It's time to just relax and enjoy. We've been through so much together, dark torrential weather. We managed to muddle.
the set. Stop it! Stop it! Munch, do you hear me? Peter, come out on stage immediately. Peter! Yes, Mr. Z. What are those people doing, Peter? I'm sorry, Mr. Z. We're shutting down. Shutting down? I didn't order anyone to shut down. I know, Mr. Z. There's been a general economic collapse because of the stock market crash. It's a depression going on. Outside, maybe, but not in here. This is the follies, Peter. I don't allow any depression in here. We've run out of money, Mr. Z. We can't meet our payroll. Everybody here is out of work, just like the rest of the country. I'm sorry, sir. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Mr. Sinkfeld? by the President of the United States, the Honorable Herbert Hoover. And now, at Mr. Hoover's invitation, a few words from America's favorite humorist, Mr. Will Rogers. Uh, Mr. Hoover wanted somebody to follow him who could cheer you folks up. I guess he must have been pretty desperate if he has to ask a Democrat. Problem is, uh, who's going to cheer me up? Because all I know is what I see on the street corners tonight. People starving, people without food, without jobs, without homes. Our own people, American people. Why, I, I hear tell that a full third of the workforce is now unemployed. And these people aren't asking for charity. All they're asking for is a chance. The next best thing we can do is see to it that they have food and the necessities of life. The difference between our, our poor and our rich grows greater every day. And there's as much money in this country as there ever was. Only now it's lying in the pockets of only a handful of men. But uh, I, I don't suppose that the, the most hungriest man or the most unemployed man in America hasn't contributed to the wealth of every millionaire in this country. You see, in order to get money, you have to take it from somebody. And it wasn't the working man that brought on this depression, no. It was them big boys who thought this financial drunk we were going through was going to last forever. They overmerged and overcapitalized and overborrowed and everything else. And put us in the fix that we're in today. But the saddest part of all is that we got people starving to death. Here in this country with, with more wheat and more corn and more of everything else than any other nation in history, we got people starving to death. Why, uh, ten men can buy the whole world and ten million can't buy enough to eat. We hold the distinction of being the only nation in history to ever go to the poorhouse in an automobile. So it's up to every one of us that, that doesn't go to bed hungry at night to, to see to it that no one else does either. You think some of these so-called big men could arrange for a better distribution of things? Because if they don't, then they're not big men at all, and that's all there is to it. So where are all these big men? Lord knows we sure could use one of them now. I really can't say anything more about it than that. What? 
That's got to be the sorriest looking sight I ever saw. Hello, Pop. What's wrong with you, boy? You're standing here like a moon. I don't know, Pop. I was thinking maybe you were right. Of course I was right. But why? About me, Pop.
off from the lagoon in Alaska when, when I noticed it wasn't doing what Wiley promised me it would do, namely fly. We're going down, Wiley! I, I cried as casual as possible, considering the circumstances. Hell well, says Wiley, you can't stay up forever. Now, old Wiley was right a lot of the time, and, well, the law of gravity being the only law that human beings have yet to break, me and Wiley went down with it. the Arctic Circle near Point Barrow, Alaska. Colonel Charles A. Lindbergh took personal charge in bringing the bodies home. Lucky Lindy was always a particular favorite of mine. Now, he was the first fellow in history to prove that he could make the front page of the New York Daily News without having to murder somebody. On August 22nd, the last rites were held in Los Angeles, California. 50,000 people bombed by his casket. It's a funny thing when you stop and think about it. It's a chance for folks to say all kinds of nice things about you that they didn't want you to hear when you were still alive. He was only 55 years old. Well, I always looked on the bright side. For a long life, it's ruined more reputations than it ever made. Washington, both houses of Congress observed a minute of silence. Now, I know a minute don't sound like much until you realize whose mouth was being shut. Life's